everyone my name is Ruchragamage in this tutorial let's see how to configure login provider to do the login with the sp.net login is very important because errors which are not in development machine can occur in production since we cannot debug the production environment always it's easier to write those errors and important code executions to log files developing our own login way is time consuming and bit complex and we would have to deal with IO operations too so it's easier to use a login provider there are many login providers for sp.net uh, log4net, elma and logger and so on today I will show you how to configure log4net with an sp.net application and how to write all the unhandled exceptions to log files this is my application log for net sample first we have to download the log for net from the apache login service home page and this is the apache login service home page i have already downloaded it in here and in the bin folder i would have to uh, copy the dll file log4net.dll and in my application i have to go here and paste it here i have already pasted it and then i have to add the reference to it and i am not going to add it because i have already added it as you can see here there is another way to add block for for your application that is uh, click on project and manage new get packages then uh, I have to connect to the internet first here 
next I have declared the appender gave it a name and uh, have set the type as rolling file appender so it will roll the log files based on rolling style in this example the roll style, rolling style is size we can have more than one appender for a, for an application there are many other appenders like SMTP appender which will send an email once a log occurs number of logging events delivered in a one email can be set by the buffer size option and adionet appender which will write the logs into a database table and event log appender which will display logs in windows event viewer and also the file appender which is the super type of rolling file appender uh, it does not have rolling capabilities so here I have started the appender tag and now I can declare my settings for that appender inside it first I am going to set the location of log files I have set the uh, log file location to test folder in C drive if there is no directory called such login provider will automatically create a one here we can also use a relative path but, but it's always better to use an absolute path and use a location outside the application because it's not a good idea to keep your logs within the application now this line for a moment I'll come here again and then the rolling style element here I have set it to size which means it will roll the files based on the file size and as you can see here I have set the maximum file size to 3 megabytes so now it will create a new file once the file size reaches 3 megabytes there are three rolling styles size date and composite if we set it to date uh, then it will create a new file when the new date occurs if we set it to composite it will roll the file depending on both the file size and date the default value for the rolling style is composite and let's say we have set the rolling style to date and maximum file size reaches before the day ends then it will not write further logs until the new day occurs that's about rolling style element and uh, if I get back to here the append to file element I have set it to true which means logs will append to the existing file if we set it to false it will create a new file each time we run the application and then the maximum roll backups element I have set its value to 10 that means there will be 10 maximum files at any given time if the maximum max size uh, roll backups limit reaches and if the application needs to create a new log file then it will delete the oldest file and create the new file now let's move to the next element which is layout element here i can set in which pattern i wish to write my logs this pattern is similar to the uh, syntax in printf function in c language here here I have set the log pattern to uh, date followed by the thread number which generated the log event followed by the level of the logging event I'll tell you later what the logging level is and by minus 5 uh, we tell it to write pad with the spaces if the login level is less than 5 characters long so that's the login level followed by the logger name which is test as you can see here followed by the uh, log message followed by a new line so this is the pattern which I need my logs to take that's all for the appender and here is the logger section I have set the name as test and the login level as 
debug by setting the login level we can control what we need to log there are five login levels debug info warn ran fit app at the code behind we can use any of those methods to do the login and by setting the login level we can only log needed information at a particular moment Debug login level has the lowest priority and then info, then warn, then error and Vital has the highest priority. For an example, let's say you publish your application to production and there you don't wish to log debug, info and warn information. Then you can set the login level to error so it will only log error and Vital messages. And that's the all configuration you have to do in the web dot com config file now let's see what we need to do in the code behind to lock all the unhandled exception as you may already know the application error method of the global dot asx file uh, will get fired whenever an unhandled exception occurs so that's the place i'm going to get the exception and write the locks as for the first step in code behind I am importing the log for a class and next I am going to tell the application which file it should use to configure log for it. in this example web config file I can do it in the application start method of the global.asx file or in the assembly info.cs file you just have to add this line if you are going to do this in the assembly info.cs file and next I need an object to do the login for that I am calling the get logger method of log manager class and I am passing the logger name to get logger method so it will return an ilog object uh, which I can use to do the login let's look at the application error method and see how to get the exception and log it by calling the server dot get last error method i can get the exception and i am writing some plus marks using the log dot debug method then i am writing the exception using log dot error method and again i am writing some plus marks using the log dot debug method uh, this is the page I am going to run demo exception.aspx. Here I am throwing a new exception at the page load. So when I run this, it should fire the application error method in the global.asx file and write the logs. If, uh, if we see my C drive now, as you can see, there is no folder called test right now and I am going to run the application using Google Chrome now I can see the test folder and inside it I can see the logs.txt file and if I open my log file now I can see the logs here so as you can see here it has printed out plus marks first and then the exception here and again the plus mark So you can see that it has took the pattern we have declared in our configuration uh, if you see the web config file again the dead 
and time followed by the thread number followed by the login level followed by the logger name followed by the log message and a new line by looking at the stack trace here I can see from where the exception occurred in this case the demo exception dot ASPX line 14 if I go here and see the line 14 that's where the exception occurred so that's the basic way to configure log for it into your ISP.NET application.